This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real learning, real videos, real success. In this demo, we're going to be working with attaching and detaching databases from our SQL Server environment. We'll also be looking at manipulating our temporary database. So let's go ahead and dive right into our Management Studio. Now, when you're in Management Studio, one of the things you'll notice is that when you create a new database, it gets added to the database catalog, which shows it within the databases folder. Now, one of the other things that comes along with that is that once it's added to the catalog, it is in continual use by SQL Server. So when you first create it, it's going to create an MDF and an LDF file in the location you designate. But from that moment forward, those files are constantly in use and cannot be directly moved without getting an error. So how do we work around that? Well, one of the ways is with our attach and our detach. So we'll go ahead and create our currency eval database. Once it's been created, if we refresh our database folder, we see that, sure enough, currency eval is there on the list. We also will note that if we go to our file system, we can see that a currency eval LDF and MDF were created inside of our MKTG folder, just like we specified. Now, if I tried to move these files right now, I would get an error because they're in use by SQL Server. So instead, we're going to come back to our management studio and we're going to detach currency eval so that we can move those files. Now, some scenarios under which we might want to move the files. Let's say I wanted to migrate this database to a different server instance. I wanted to put it in a new file system location and then move it to the other server. So you'll notice here we've got two servers that we're connected to. One is our SQL 2012 and the other is our SQL Server 2012 v2. So what we're going to do is we're going to detach currency eval from the first server using our tasks, detach, and it brings us our detach dialog. Now, one of the first things that we want to always make sure we're checking is the drop connections. Dropping connections ensures that anybody else who's trying to communicate with currency eval is dropped out so that we can actually detach it. If you don't check this, there's a good chance that you'll get an error when you're trying to detach because it's still in use by some users somewhere in your system. So once we have that checked, we can click our OK button and it detaches the database from our environment. You'll notice the currency eval is no longer on the list inside of our SQL 2012 server. From there, I can now go back to the file system, and these are no longer in use, which means I can now move them. So we're going to go ahead and move these files to our Server 2 folder. So imagine this is moving it to a new server. So now that we have them in our Server 2 folder, we want to reattach them to the second server. So we'll go ahead and collapse our SQL 2012 and expand our SQL 2012 v2. Now we're going to go to our databases folder, right click, and we're going to do an attach. Now in order to attach, I have to point it at the MDF file that I want to attach. So we'll use our add button to accomplish this. We can then navigate down through our folders until we find our D drive and our server 2 folder, and then we can select our currency eval.mdf. Once we've added that into our attached databases dialog, we need to verify that both the currency eval.mdf and the currency eval.ldf are present and that they are in the appropriate location. In this case, they are. Once we've verified all of that, we can hit our OK button and the new database has been attached to our second server. So with this method, we were able to not only separate it from the server instance, move the independent files underneath it, and then reattach it to a new server instance. Now, the other thing we want to look at within this demo is the idea of manipulating our tempdb. Now, your tempdb lives within your system databases folder. And your tempdb, if you look at it by default, we'll go ahead and look at its properties, you'll notice that it has a series of files just like any other database. The first file is called tempdev, and that's your actual MDF file. And the other is templog. And if we scroll to the right, we'll notice that those files are stored in a particular location. So these ones are currently in my D drive tempdb. 
Now, if I wanted to move them from this location, I can do that a number of different ways. So we're going to look at that right now. So when we're ready to move it, we can use our alter database command. So if I alter my database, tempdb, I can modify its file. We have to tell which file we want to modify. And in this case, we're going to move it to a new location called tempdb2. So we're moving it from one folder to another. And we're doing the same thing for the log file. Now, they don't need to be moved to the same folder. We're just doing that to show you that they do, in fact, move. Now, one of the interesting phenomena that occurs here is that when I execute this statement, it tells me, yep, we've got your modification registered. You're good to go. But if we look in our actual file system and we look at our tempdb folder, they're still there. Nothing is in our tempdb2 yet. And the reason for that is because the files for tempdb are not moved until the restart of the server instance. Because remember, every time that the server instance is restarted, it recreates the tempdb, and it'll recreate it based on the settings that we just modified. Now, even though we could do other changes as well, it still is not going to move them. For example, I could add in additional files. So here we're going to go ahead and add in a tempdev2, 3, and 4 into this environment. Notice they are in, and we'll put these in our tempdb2 so they're all in the new location. So I'm moving these files into tempdb2. And when I run this, all those new files will appear but it will still not have moved the original files. So let that run. We'll check our file system again. And sure enough, there's tempdev2, tempdev3, tempdev4, but no original tempdev and no tempdev or templog. So again, we can make changes, and new changes will appear immediately. But alterations of the existing tempdb do not actually happen until you restart the server. So if I were to come in and I were to restart this server, we'll right-click on it and we'll select Restart. And it says, are you sure you want to do this? This time, yes. <laughs> so once it's finished restarting, we can go back and check the file system and see the changes that it's made. You'll now notice that we have tempdb inside of our new folder with our dev2, dev3, and dev4. And there's our temp log. So it's moved those two files over to go along with the other additional files that we created. So when you're working with your temp DB, remember that you can change it, you can add new files to it, you can move those files to different drives to improve performance, but the changes will not take effect until you restart the server. Now, one other thing that we want to look at to wrap up this demo is what happens when we try and clean this up. If I were to come in, for example, and I were to try and remove one of those files, notice that I'm going to get an error. And the error I'm getting is, hey, that's in use. It's got data in it. You can't just simply remove a file once it's been created and utilized. So we have to do a special command anytime we want to remove files. This is not just for the tempdb. It's for any database. But we need to come in, and we need to actually shrink that down and empty the file. So here I've got my tempdev2, and I'm going to empty it. Once it's empty, then I can remove it. Now that it's empty, I try and remove it again, and I have no problem. Now, an interesting other thing to note is that we had multiple files that we created here, tempdev2, tempdev3, tempdev4. If I were to go in and immediately try and empty the next one, There we are. And then we do our next one. And there we are. So you've got to move these one at a time. If you try and run them all at once, one of the problems that you'll run into is that it can have a conflict where it's not finished removing the data from the earlier steps into the other locations before it does the remove. And they end up tripping over each other. So general best practice is to do one file removal at a time not try and do multiple simultaneously. So with that, hopefully you have a better understanding of attaching and detaching, as well as manipulating your tempdb. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. 
please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven-day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.